Yeah, I mean, college basketball is a great game. I tell the guys all the time, if you respect the game and you put everything you have into it, the game will pay you back tenfold. Um, and what the game gives you much more than, like, championship rings or wins or even great memories on the court. It just gives you relationships. You know, there's something about being on a team and being in that locker room and the bus rides and plane rides at this level. Um, the elation of a big win, the disappointment of a adversity. It's just like real life. You know, there's nothing more important than what you can learn on a team. I've always thought that the greatest classroom these guys can be a part of in their college experiences <clears throat> is the basketball. That's all with respect to academics. Um, but there's just like real life lessons. So part of that's just all the opportunities you have. Like just this this year alone, these guys will have a chance to go to Madison Square Garden, they'll have a chance to go to South Beach, they'll have a chance to play in some of the best venues in college basketball, they have a chance to go to Kansas City, uh, when you go to the Basketball Hall of Fame. So it's just special. So as much as we are concerned about winning and we understand the business of everything, we also, like Tariq said, we we respect balance, you know. I don't think you can be at your best basketball-wise unless you have some balance. That that's always starts with your faith and your family. And then high on that list is the relationships with the guys that you work and play with. Coach, 7-0 start, but every win by double digits. What's been the most impressive part from the coaching aspect of, of your team's performance this season? Well, I think it's awful early, first of all. This thing doesn't shape out until you start getting into conference play. To this point, we know we've done what we're supposed to do in terms of protecting our home court. And we played some really good teams at home. As the year goes on, my thought on that will be validated. Kind of like last year when we played Nevada, I tried to tell people how good Nevada was. Some people look at me like I'm crazy, you know. And then later on in the year, Nevada, Sweet 16, maybe an Elite 18. Um, this year, I feel the same way about some of the teams coming in here in the non-conference. So we've done what we're supposed to do there. And we've taken advantage of opportunities. You know, we competed for a championship at Kansas City, played some really good basketball. Um, then certainly playing a Memphis team who's only going to get better, a team I have a lot of respect for. We got better playing Memphis because of things Penny uh, did to us. Um, and so it's awful early to start talking about where this team could go. But I like our day-to-day -day approach. Um, yesterday's practice is a great example. It didn't seem like a practice with a nationally ranked team sitting around, you know, getting fat. We, it seemed like a team that had an edge. There was hard coaching going on. There was player accountability. I think if you'd come to our practice tomorrow, yesterday, you wouldn't have known what our record is. And that's exactly what we have to do is we continue to try to compete in this league. And you talk about, yeah, it is early and things are going to shape up. But Tariq, eight blocks of a program record. How much has he evolved into this system? How much more comfortable has he been getting these first few games? Yeah, it's a process for all players. It's a very challenging what these grad transfers try to do. You know, it looks easy on paper. You're a really good player at St. John's or South Dakota, and now you're going to come bring your game to Texas Tech. But it's, it's very difficult to fit into a new system, new teammates, get comfortable. Like Players like Matt and Tariq, I mean, these are big-time players. These are guys that are going to play basketball after college. And so a big part of their DNA is being aggressive. Uh, but at the same time, when you join a new program, you want to try to fit in, too. So um, it's difficult what these guys are doing. I so much respect for Anthony Livingston on our first year team. They really made us valid, played some great basketball that year. And Anthony was another example of a grad transfer coming in here, getting comfortable, staying aggressive, also being coachable and learning. And uh, Matt and Tariq are in that same category. Um, in this early season, Matt has already won games for us, games we just don't win unless he's on the team. And certainly against Memphis, Tariq was the best player on the floor. Coach, how do you evaluate a couple of the slow starts you guys have had? Because on one hand, it's not a habit you want to start. But on the other, you're proving your guys can finish. And you're only seven games into the season. Well, first of all, it was just like, I guess, a couple weeks ago, I was getting questions about why we're starting so strong and then letting teams back in the game. The first thing you understand about competition athletics is, is the other team's trying to win, too. The other team has good players, good coaches. They have a game plan. So sometimes our slow starts aren't necessarily slow starts. It's the other team playing really good basketball. I don't want to speak for Memphis, but in my opinion, that was the best half they have played all year long. Their pace, their poise, their shot selection, they took it right at us. So a big part of our slow start was the other team playing really well. Um, I think what, what you always like look at from a coach's standpoint is, is it effort? Is it attitude? Is it playing hard? 
if it's that, then you got to get that fixed. And I think that was some of our issues in one of our games in Kansas City. The other thing is you think about it's just maybe sometimes it's just execution. Like, I mean, our guys came to play in Miami. We were ready to play. Effort wasn't a problem. Uh, we just weren't playing well. You know, you, this game is a it's an interesting game. You know, it's a lot of times it comes down to making shots. You know, some games we look like we're the best three point shooting team in the country. Some games the same players are taking the same exact shots. Ball doesn't go in. All of a sudden, looks like you're not playing well. So. Um, I, th I like our team uh, as approach to starting games, except for one game this season. But there's just times in the, in the season where you have to play better basketball. Uh, the thing we have to learn is like, you know, when the shots aren't going down, can we get to the free throw line? Um, when our defense isn't at full speed, can we be really disciplined and not foul? We have to kind of take what the game gives us, and we're, we're just a work in progress in that regard. Coach, obviously it's early in the year, but with a few different pieces than last year, were you surprised at all with the amount of the level of consistency you've shown early in the season? Not surprised. I mean, it's what we expect. You know, we expect to win. We expect to play well. Um, I think in some ways we've shown some consistency, but in other ways we're really lacking. Um, you know, we grade out every game, and uh, it's an NBA grade system. We've done it all since I was at. Fort Scott Community College back in the day. Every team we've ever coached, we grade the game. And uh, the grade that you get in a game is not necessarily how many points you scored or what you did. It's 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 an overall look. You get pluses and minus for defense, plus and minus for offense. The the assist is valuable. The turnover is not. And so basically on a night where maybe you don't make shots, you can still play positive. And what you've got to do to win a Big 12 game is everybody on your team has to have a positive game. You know, some of our games last year, when you think about at TCU, at Kansas State, uh, the tournament, Florida, Purdue, at Kansas last year. I mean, what happens in those games is everybody that plays for our team is positive. It doesn't mean everybody has a crazy great game, but everybody plays positive. Nobody's hurting the team. That's the consistency we're looking for, and we have not gotten there yet. Even in our best moments this year, we still got a couple guys that aren't playing up to their potential and expectations. So this is what coaching is. You're always striving for getting a little bit better, uh, the perfect game. You're never going to get it, but you're always striving for it. Coach, uh, do you have an update on Kayvon Moore? Uh, same, same thing. Uh, successful surgery. He's back in practice now. Uh, with each day practicing a little bit more. Uh, in yesterday's practice, he went up and down uh, for the first time in a while. So we're just continuing to uh, evaluate him. I'll tell you guys as soon as anything changes. And uh, you were just talking about grading. What, what are one facet you're, that you still want uh, to see improvement on from this team? Uh, so many, so many things. I think uh, one example would be rebounding. I think we have the ability to be a really good defensive rebounding team with our toughness and our size and our versatility, athleticism, and then offensively, I think we have some real game changers that can create extra possessions. Um, but rebounding, something that we're always working on. I think we can get a lot better at it. Coach, I know you don't have necessarily roles where you have starters or role guys, but I guess how have you kind of seen Brandon, Kyler, and Deshaun just really kind of gel and really kind of give you a spark when when you do bring them in? Yeah, well, first of all, I I, uh, I thought Brandon verbalized it well. Uh, you know, as a senior, he's a real pro um, in a lot of ways. But, you know, Brandon um, is bought into this role. I've, I've always thought one of the most important people in college basketball is your sixth man. Um, Coach Knight talked about this a lot when he was at Ohio State. His teammate was Havlicek, and then when Havlicek went to play for Arbach with the Celtics, Coach Knight was obviously still really good friends. And just the value of a six man. Uh, at one point, Havlicek might have been the best player in the NBA, but he was coming off the bench. People would ask the Celtics why, and Coach would always say, hey, I always thought your best player should come in off the bench. Uh, he can change the game when he comes in offensively and defensively. Uh, we've done this a lot. Uh, Zaire Smith played that role last year for a long time. Naeem Stevenson played that role. We've had some really good six-mans over the years um, at everywhere we've been. At Little Rock, Mo Isom played a great role. So in this year, I think Brandon Francis is a starter in my mind. He's one of our best players. If you look at it, he plays more minutes than most players each game. Um, but I love the idea of bringing him off the bench because I think he changes the game when he comes in. He still plays starter minutes. Whether this will continue throughout the season just depends. Um, but I think as we sit here today, there's a real case that could be made that Brandon Francis has a chance to be the sixth man in the Big 12 this year. Working with Kyler and Deshaun, I guess what, what's allowed them to kind of earn their minutes and just kind of get that much better? Well, first, just their talent, Carlos. They're, they're two of our best players. Uh, Deshaun's a junior college national champion, guy that came in here is really coachable, plays multiple spots. He's one of our best players. Um, very coachable and just learns every day. 
Uh, then I think Kyler is a very, very talented young player. I put him in the same class as Zaire and Culver with just talent. Um, he's just learning how to play at this level. He's definitely going in the right direction. He's getting better every day. His ceiling is unlimited. Um, I think it's just a matter of time till things click. And the young guy sitting here next to me after a 20-point game or after a 10-assist game, he's that close, he's that talented. For that, uh, what are some things that Deshaun could improve on to further better his game? So just consistency, like all our players. Uh, Corporal has shown the ability to play at this level on both ends of the floor. Now it's just consistency. That's what separates the average guy from the really good player. And that's what separates the really good player from an all-league player. It's consistency. Everybody on our team can play in the Big 12. Um, but it's the guys that can consistently do it over over time, over possessions, over games, over weeks, months. You know, that's what makes uh, the kind of players you have to have in the Big 12 to win. Coach, down on the beach, we were kind of in a hurry to get on the bus and get back to the hotel. Uh, a guy comes up and uh, wants to just talk to Malik. Malik stops, takes pictures with him, and then as he's getting on the bus, takes his shirt off his back and gives it to the guy. What does that say about his character and his importance to your team? Yeah, Jeff, I respect you in the question. I, sometimes those things get kind of fluffy in today's world. Um, but I can tell you on that one deal, what that wasn't Malik. Malik's not a fluff guy. He's a great kid. Uh, what you see with Malik on the Malik's minutes or in the locker room or all you've met him and stuff, he's just an unbelievable kid, was raised the right way. You know, you say all the time, this guy would get the shirt off his back, and Malik really did. Uh, there was a guy right there in South Beach who was just interested in our team, seemed to be like a really good uh, uh, athletics fan. And then, uh, you know, Malik had a, gave him a Texas Tech shirt. So those things make you proud. I think sometimes when those things pop up in social media and they're, like, created, I've always had kind of a problem with it. Like, to me, that's fluff. Um, but with Malik, it's not. And it's just like with Brandon last year. Brandon didn't know that there was any camera on him when he was at, I guess he was at Popeyes or something. Yeah. So the, the, the funny story on that, you know, Brandon Francis has transformed his body since he got here. When he got here, for lack of better words, he was kind of a pudgy guy couldn't play at this level. Um, and so I'm always on Brandon about diet and this and that. Brandon's on a strictly no fried fruit diet, no sodas and this and that. So last year, you guys remember, he's at Popeye's in town. He gives somebody his shoes or something. It was a magical moment. Um, so where the whole world is congratulating Brandon, I called him and I was like, hey, Brandon, what the hell are you doing in a Popeye's? You know? <laughs> and so Brandon's like, coach, I can't win with you. And I was like, well, maybe you can. It's your senior year. We got a pretty good team. Maybe you can win. So, but no, Malik's a special guy. Anything you read about Malik is real. He's he's about as good as you can get character-wise. Coach, what stands out about Arkansas Pine Bluff to you? Yeah, really a scary team, a team that has our full attention and respect. They're really, really athletic. Um, they have a guard that's averaging over 25 points a game, which is this morning, I think he was ninth in the country in scoring. He's a very, very aggressive player. Every time he gets the ball, he puts pressure on the defense. They have a couple other really good shooters. They have some good size. Our bigs will have to play well. And they play a very open floor game. A lot of similarities between Memphis, how they like to run, and how they offensive rebound, and Pine Bluff. So we're going to have to clean up a lot of things, transition defense, our block out. Uh, you know, we'll have to play well. This is college basketball. Um, every night, you know, I, I look at that ticker, and you see a game where, I don't know, you call it an upset or what. To me, there are no upsets. I've been on the other end of these games. I've been at Little Rock when we went and beat the Texas Techs of the world. So, um, you know, our players will be dialed in. We'll be ready for this game just like we just like we would be if we were playing Kansas. When you put a schedule together, specifically non-conference, you you try to put things in there that you might see in the conference schedule. What do you hope to get – what do you hope these guys see getting you ready for Big 12 play? Well, we do a lot of objectives when we put our schedule together. We want to play the best teams we can to challenge our guys. Uh, there will be a lot of similarities between this three-game homestand with – um, with Pine Bluff, plays fast, they're athletic, they've got really good shooters. So with each game, there's lessons to be learned, there's objectives, you know, this game's no different. Announced the new uh, head football coach, he said something that sealed the deal was when he left that conversation, he said he had a flashback to when he was hiring you, and he said that he knew that that was his guy because he had the same feeling. When you hear something like that, what's your response to Kirby Hocutt? Well, I just wonder if Coach Wells and Kirby were holed up in a – room in Vegas with security outside and the windows closed. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I'll say this. I have a lot of confidence and faith in Kirby. Um, you know, this guy is a uh, 
transcending leader. He has a vision. He, uh, he takes it all in, makes decisions with his experience as a student athlete, as an AD, and his intelligence. I think he's got a good feel for for everything here. Um, I haven't met Coach Wells yet. We've exchanged some messages. I'm a college football fan. Probably saw his team play three times last year because I watch a lot of football. So I know about the offense, opportunistic defense, a lot of turnovers, I think, with their team. Um, also been to Utah State. When I coached at North Texas, we were in the same conference, Big West. I've seen the football stadium and all. So I'm looking forward to meeting Coach. I have a lot of faith in Kirby. Um, our program will support Coach Wells' program 100%, just like we did my good friend Cliff. I don't know, it was just coming to me. Uh, we picked up our intensity defensively as a team, uh, especially late in that second half, to uh, be able to come back and win. So, uh, you know, as a team, we just picked it up. We went to that 2-3 uh, zone. Um, and, you know, team defense really just helps me do what I can do. How difficult is it to kind of be so aggressive going for blocks, especially with four fouls? I guess how difficult was that for you to just stay so disciplined throughout that whole process? Um, it makes it more difficult. It's definitely something that's in the back of your head, knowing that you got four. But um, at the same time, uh, we were down, so we still had to be aggressive defensively. So, um, you know, it just changes your strategy a little bit. But when you're fighting from behind, it's just doing whatever you can. As a senior leader, what, what, what do you feel this team learned from that, from that victory that you all got? Um, we learned a lot. Um, honestly, it was a game that, that we feel like we needed. Um, but it was a character win, as Coach said. And, uh, you know, we just learned that we got to play for 40 minutes. I mean, it's always been said, but, um, you know, starting off slow, it can really, it can really take a toll on your team. And uh, we didn't really get back into it until, like, the last 10 minutes of the game. And um, just going into conference play and with the games coming up, we can't, we can't afford to do that. Brandon. How would you describe the team chemistry right now, seven games in, and uh, what have you seen from this team chemistry-wise and atmosphere-wise? I feel like we're getting better. And, uh, you know, it's actually when you out there and we, we go through stuff like we did this past weekend, I feel like we become a lot closer. Uh, we do a lot of stuff off the court, and I feel like it's just relating into the court now. Kind of off of that, Tariq, how quickly, I mean, does it seem like – you guys have been, you and Matt have been here for a while now. It just, it seemed like a smooth transition. How's that process has gone for you and what do you guys need to do moving forward? Um, yeah, transition has been great. Uh, it's been going good for me. Um, I can, I say, I say, I can say, I think it's going well for Matt as well. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time together as a team. So, um, the guys who have been here, like, Brandon and Norrance and you know, even guys like Andrew and Parker who've all been here and Jared, you know, they just really helped us learn, like learning our offense, learning our defense and just picking up our culture, just how to do things the right way. So, um, you know, it's it's been fun. I've really enjoyed it so far and I feel like we're really getting better as a team. Um, Tariq, there have been a couple games this year where you guys are either, it's a tight game or you're even down by a little bit and then you just pull away by a huge margin in that second half. What do you think's been the key for you guys to be able to adjust and really get over that hump in those games? Um, I mean, we're prepared. We know we're prepared. Uh, you know, the coaching staff, Coach Beard, you know, he talks to us at halftime during the games. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's always inspiring. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're very, you're very motivational, Coach. I, I can't say that. So. Um, you know, that's always gets us going. And then, you know, us just believing in each other and believing in the work that we put in every day, the process. So, um, you know, all those things going into the game, just right. knowing that we have each other's backs and knowing that we don't want to let each other down and lose a game. So, you know, all that just feeds into it. Brandon, I guess the, the same thing for you. How have you guys really been able to be able to pull away and just against all these teams and a couple of the top 25 teams in that in that second half? I think it comes down to the process and the stuff that we do on a daily basis. Um, we can thank enough uh, Coach uh, Riley for the stuff he does for us. I think we prepare physically and Coach prepared us mentally. And I feel like when we out there, we just got to execute. Uh, we're going to make mistakes throughout the game. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, the team that made a few mistakes is going to end up winning. And uh, if I, I just feel like we just prepared overall physically, mentally, on and off the court. And I think it's showing when it's, when it's uh, grind time. Tariq, you kind of talked a little bit about just how much time you guys spend together as a team, but how much do you benefit from going on the road to a place like Florida that just um, obviously allows you guys to be able to enjoy each other's company outside of the arena? Um, I mean, we benefit a lot. Uh, Coach Beard talks a lot about balance. 
um, you know, just finding that balance uh, with everything that you do. So we spend a lot of time in the gym. So it's just as important to get uh, to get that same amount of time that we spend in the gym off the court. Um, we chill as a team with the coaching staff, you know, be out and about, go to the movies, eat together. We do a lot together. So uh, it, we just benefit a lot from it and, uh, you know, just build strong relationships for for preparing us for on the court, you know. And just not wanting to let each other down. That's And that's just what it comes down to, playing for the guy that's next to you and the coaching staff that bought us here gave us this opportunity.